purpose for my main purpose for teaching you alpha software is to help you um, create skills that can um, create products into your design thinking. So there's a lot of emphasis on creating products and we have software engineers who do this as a vocation, they write codes and all that. Um, they all use, we all use different um, ID platforms. That's what it's called. People, some people use that head that they write Java, they write C Sharp and the rest of that, which is good. But also it's not about just the code, it's about what you're able to create. Right, so there are platforms now that allows you to write, I mean, to create apps without having to write code. and that's what makes um, alpha software different. There are many others, but alpha software is quite very robust and is very easy to quickly get onto. So um, just like I mentioned, um, the hosting is not free, but it's affordable. But again, you can test remotely within your own local IP and um, you can test with many devices. So you can test on your laptop and on phones, uh, as long as they're all within your own um, local IP, right? So it, it, it's, it's, it's um, a platform with which you can easily demo a product or showcase your skill on what you can do. Um, it's also a platform with which you can easily um, bring to life the skills you have. Um, so I've mentioned this yeah. before, but just to mention again, oh, yeah. a low-code or no-code platform mm -hmm. for people who want to write, who want to extend um, application they build on alpha software, they can write code to do that. Um, then it allows you to connect to external DB and the rest of that. Um, it also has its own built-in database. Then um, you can create um, components which you can use both on web and on mobile app. So it's a one size fits all. Then it has inbuilt security without you writing any line of code, which I which I showed you in the last class on how to build um, login into your web or mobile app. Right. So. Um, many companies um, have a lot to say about um, alpha software. Um, they use it to scale quickly to build products for um, small, medium scale businesses, um, especially in the US. So it's a very, very good um, platform. Um, these are some tips for you for building on alpha software. Um, at some point I had to introduce databases to you. You don't need an extensive knowledge of database, just a basic knowledge on how to create um, tables and relationship between them. So um, it's not part of um, what I want to cover extensively in this training, but you can learn more about it from W3Schools um, link. Um, but just the, and it also allows you to connect to access files. Um, access files also develops um, tables, rows, and columns. Unfortunately, you can't use Excel file, but Excel file to just, uh, the, it's just like Excel file is a flat table structure. It's not a relational database. That's why it's not aligned um, use with Excel file. But if you can use Excel file, then you will be able to understand RDBMS, they are quite easy to get on with. And you don't need an extensive knowledge of it. It's just knowledge on um, tables and the data in them, which is row, which is in row and columns, um, table heading, just a way, um, just, um, how do I put it? A, a structure to store your data 
for the um, application and also store the data that users input into the application. So databases are actually very important. And you can use Alpha software to build both static apps, so applications that is not connecting to any database, and you can also use it to um, build um, data-driven application. Um, so the main um, things that um, you should know about Alpha software, the main components that you should know, okay, I don't want to say components, the main items that you should know about Alpha software are the workspace, what is a workspace? Um, how do you work on a workspace? And the workspace is actually what you first of all see when you get into Alpha software. Then projects, what's the relationship between workspaces and projects? How do you create projects, new projects, go back to existing projects? Then one of the most powerful thing unique to Alpha software is web components. So web components, what are they? How do you use them? We've used a couple of them in this, um, in our various sessions of the classes, we've used the grid view components, um, the UX components, the tab UI components, the login components. So um, the components are the main items on any platform or on any page. So imagine you are using a mobile app, whatever thing is displaying for you there is a component. Now, the container that that component is placed in is what we call panels or frames. Um, I didn't mention that, but those you, sh you should understand how to use web components and then the containers for those web components, then alpha five pages. So if you want to display this on a web page, you have to embed your web components into an alpha five page. And um, you can as well use an alpha five page to build a static page using the HTML page. Um, I mean, sorry, you can use alpha software to build static websites using HTML page. The only difference is that your HTML um, details are in there, your HTML tags, and then you won't have to um, insert components. So this kind of summarizes um, what we've done in the past two classes. Um, so, yeah, so um, these are tips for you. I shared them in the first slide as well. Um, having installed the software, the IDE platform, I mean, you should um, follow video tutorials because you really need to do a lot of practice. The two trainings we've done is to um, cover a lot, but it's not going to be enough. The more you practice, the more you get used to all the various components and the properties of each component in Alpha software. Um, then most importantly, build, create something, and then create something that is also, um, um, how will I put it? Something that is lo localized. Um, so it's good to recreate the demo apps, but also create something that is unique to your own idea. Then test this with other people, with users. Just like I said, you can do a remote test. Um, you, you could have created it on your laptop and then someone else can access on their mobile and the rest of that, which is very fantastic because with that, you can use that to pitch your software. Um, you can use that to demonstrate to people or to businesses that, oh, this is what I can create for you. Um, for your for your for your business or for for this project idea or things like that. So Alpha Software is really very good for that. And then when you find people who are interested and they are willing to put their money on it, then you can use that to scale the application um, by simply hosting it with any of the available web hosters. Um, so then if you develop something interesting, I really want to see it. Uh, you can send that to me on my email. You are going to have this slide so you can still have my email in it. So 
most importantly, we need to build. We are going to build one together today. And I'll also show you how to quickly um, bring up the demo mobile app. Um, so, okay, so just like I said earlier on, this with alpha software, you can easily create what we call MVP. What software engineer call MVP? MVP simply means minimum viable product. And with a minimum viable product, these are many things you can achieve with it. You can use this to pitch your ideas before investors for seed capital. So sometimes, oops. So when, when the likes of Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, Uber app and the rest of that, when the likes or even um, um, CUDA that you're all aware of, any other apps that you know, when they start, most times they don't have the full idea. What they have is usually a pitch. So a pitch is somewhat like, this is what I can do. And I've been able to create a, a, um, a minimum application for it. So if you're able to do this with alpha software and it even has you know, features of what the app is looking like, people can log in, they can test the app, then you are, you'll be able to convince your um, investors or people who are interested in your idea to put in money. Then um, you can also use this to quickly scale up to create applications for businesses and business owners might just be willing to pay for it. So you see this, this is a special skill that quickly launch you, launches you into the market and makes you um, very relevant. Then with this, you can even be an inventor. So inventing is about ideas. Fine, um, knowing how to code makes sense, is good, but it's not just about knowing how to code, it's about putting together your ideas and um, being able to demo it as well, because it's only when people see or feel your idea that they can relate with it. You know, there are many talkers, but we need action. So you need, you, you can use alpha software to be able to scale up quickly to um, not just have the design thinking in your brain, but you're able to develop something, you're able to create something. So um, it also you know, gives you a job or project with technology-driven companies. Of course, when you have an interview and you can say, oh, this is what I can do, just employ me. Immediately they see what you can do, you have the job. Then um, with this, you can showcase your skills quickly and make yourself relevant. Um, then when there are hackathons, when there are competitions, um, just like we are going to have at the end of this training, then when you're able to pitch an idea and showcase what you can do, then you can win great prizes. So there are, there are, there are many advantages you have in you know, um, upskilling yourself and upskilling yourself. So it's really very important, but um, nobody is going to tell you that um, the road to getting gold is easy. It's never easy. You need to make out time. Um, trainings are good, but the trainings are only going to um, push you to do more, to learn more. And then the more you learn, the more you practice, the more you know. Right. So, um, so with that said, I'm going to. Okay, I have to stop sharing and go to my alpha software. So I want to show you quickly how to um, how to pop up the demo apps that ships with Alpha software. So there are two demo apps that ships with Alpha software: the web app demo and the mobile app demo. And everything we've learned in this class is covered within those demos because we are going to see hands-on practicals on how these um, things were created and how you can also um, create them in a full application. And once you're done with that, um, I just put some, some pictures here so that it can help you when you revisit this slide. Um, but then once we're done with that, we're going to create 
a customized demo together quickly. And you see how interesting and how fast you can create demo apps um, using alpha software. So let me stop sharing and go to alpha software. So for now, I'll just advise that you follow me, follow through with um, what I'm demonstrating. You may not go into your own alpha software yet or now. Just follow through with what I'm demonstrating there. Once you have the slides and the video recording, you can um, test as well yourself. And hopefully after today's revision, I'm going to see much more interesting applications from you all. And maybe some of you would use Alpha software to demo to us what we'll have on the, on the um, final day of the event, where we'd like to see what you're able to create based on all that you have learned. Okay, so good, good, good. Let me go into Alpha software now. So uh, once you've installed your Alpha Anywhere, you can simply go into it by um, clicking on the menu. Oops, let me close this. Okay, please, can you all see my screen? Yes, ma. Okay, yeah, I have a clean page now. Okay, so um, when you launch your alpha software, it will first of all show you this um, select box space um, on your page. Let me maximize this, sorry. Okay, so um, so on the select workspace, you're going to see two tabs, workspace and task, news and updates. So this is just for general advice. The main, this is where we're going to, um, this is the main place we're going to. So um, for in fresh installation, you're not going to see all this um, um, existing workspace. These are workspaces that have been created. But this is where I want us to start from. So we're going to come to sample and tutorial workplaces. Now, under sample and tutorial workplaces, you have two main options. You have the server demo, and then you have the demo mobile app. Now, this the first one um, allows you, I mean, the first one allows you to create a demo for web application. And I'm going to show you what it looks like quickly. And then the second one for web. So for the demo um, application, you can leave the default workspace um, URL um, path. This is where to launch the application into. So you can leave it as whatever default you have there. So you just click OK. Now, when, when after clicking, it's going to just pop up this message. All you just need to do is to say OK. Mm -hmm. 
Good. So um, once you see this thing, um, you need to just follow these two steps. Click the publish files link to publish the file and then launch the application. Now, um, you're already familiar with launching application based on what we've done in previous classes. The same thing as um, what, um, what we do to do a remote test or to preview, to do a live preview. So that will just simply launch it. But before you do that, you need to publish it. Um, per adventure, you later on want to also publish your um, alpha software application to a web hosting um, site. You still need to publish it um, using the web hosting details. Right, so this is just for the demo that ships with alpha software. So um, you just click on publish and then launch application. Now, when you click on publish for, um, so you just say, um, so remember in the last class, we talked about web security for login um, that ships with alpha software. So you can either allow it to say, okay, I want login features in my web application, or you say no. Um, okay, so we can say yes, and then we do publish. Now for, for okay, so you just follow the prompt and say, okay. So once the publish is complete, you can now launch the application. Can close this and then launch the application. Um, yeah, so just say yes for it to launch the application. Okay, so this is what a typical web application for alpha software will look like with the um, tabs and the menus. So your menus can be on the right or on the left. Um, and um, within your menus, you can see various components. So this data actually shifts with alpha software. And I'm going to show you um, where to connect the data because in my own case, the data is already connected, but for a new, um, when you are doing this at first, for the very first time, then you need to connect the um, data to the database that ships with alpha software. Okay, so you can just close this. This opens up for you in a web in a um, web page. So you can just close this web page. Then go back to your alpha software, and then close this. So once you close, um, it's going to bring you to the workspace with all the projects that shipped with it installed. So for you to see the projects, um, okay, so for this particular um, web application, these are all the components that came with it. You can see, you can see it's quite a lot. And uh, there are alpha five pages as well that comes with it. Um, so for you to connect to the database for this to function properly, if you remember in the first class, we connected this demo app, but because we didn't connect to the database, the demo app was not um, popping up. So, so this is how to connect to the database for the demo app. Um, just come to your menu here, click on SQL, then click on Alpha DAO connection strings. Um, so the demo app that ships with, um, I mean, the database that ships with the demo app for Alpha software is called the Nothing um, Demo. And the link to creating it is actually somewhere hidden here just below where, um, just within your um, Alpha DAO connections um, um, page. So you just have to click on this and then just follow the prompt. 
But because I already have mine created, it's asking me, should this create a clean copy of yeah, I'll just say yes so that we see the way it's created. So once it's created, it will um, pop up in your connection names here. Right, so you can see the um, demo, the database that ships with alpha software for the demo app. So if you look at this closely, you'll see that um, is actually pointing to a file, right? Within your um, within your uh, alpha software installation. So this is actually a path name. And if you launch yours as well, you see the path name. You can as well go to this. Okay, let me copy this path name and go to my file URL so that we can see the database together, the file together. So I'm just going to copy this, go to, um, go to my, okay. So I'm just going to go to the URL and see what, see the file. Good. So you can see this is the file, not in database file that ships with um, alpha software. Um, you can see some other files. Please do not tamper with these files, just for you to see the database that actually ships with Alpha URL. So um, let's go back to our Alpha software. So with this demo app, we can um, see different types of web components, right? You even have a web component for Mac, um, both list and all that. And one thing I want you to um, know very well about Alpha software is the web components. Once you are very familiar with the different web components um, and their properties, which is quite a lot, um, then you'll be very comfortable with building with Alpha software. So you can always create a new web component from here, just like we've learned in our previous class, but our focus here for today is for you to see different types of web components and how you can use them. And um, you really need to launch those two demo apps so that has to see live for yourself how these web components work. So I'm just going to pick on one of these web components and um, we're going to view together what the web components um, is four. So let's start with this register new user web component. Is a UX um, type. So if you want to create a mobile app, you definitely need to use a UX component. <clears throat> so UX component is uh, majorly designed for uh, mobile app. So um, let's just see what one of these does. So whenever you click on a component, um, you can always say no, do not create a backup. So if you create, if you click on this, it only duplicates that web component in its backup so that you don't lose, um, so that you can always have a backup should in case you delete the web component. But for this, we don't need a backup, so we can just say no. So once you say no, um, you see it pops up the web component. Now, um, Alpha software seems to have a lot of um, overwhelming menus and all that, but just get familiar with, you need to start with a workspace, then create a project, or there's a project created on default for you, then create your web components. So um, for based on the type of um, application you want to develop, then you choose the component that, um, 
that is suitable for it. So if you are doing a mobile app, you definitely need to use a UX web component. So your UX web component, this is it. Um, for you to see the details of the web component, click on UX. Click on UX, um, the down arrow on UX, right? And for you to demo it or to preview what it looks like within the component. So this is just for one component preview. Make sure you check this mobile box. If you don't check it and you try to preview, some of you complained of that to me. If you don't check it and you try to preview, it's not going to show you anything. Right, so um, when you come to walk in preview, um, you can choose different ways you want to preview it, but for the default one is fine as well. You can as well see what it looks like on the phone when it is vertical and when it is horizontal, right? So this is a um, component for collecting um, you know, the personal information for, um, so with this, I can create, I can create new data. I can submit a form, right? And this speaks to a table. So it's going to submit successfully. So let's try this. Let me use the email one. So um, the web component for this, I need to check why it's not submitting, but um, this particular one is just to um, create a new user for the mobile app. So let's see, let's see the data binding solution for this. So for every of your controls, right, you can always check the properties here. And these properties contain uh, many things that affect the look and feel of your, of your data, um, both within um, alpha software and submitting to alpha software. Um, I don't know why this is not submitting for now. Let's see. Okay, let's not waste time on this. We are going to um, create our own, which we should um, submit. So, but for this web components, what I want you to see basically is how to, um, what, the different web com components will display what the display is going to look like, right? So this is one of them. And um, so for this particular component, if I want to close it, I'm just going to um, click on close here. No, right. So then um, 
So for each functionality on your uh, on your component, right? On on your mobile, you can create a component for it. Um, and if I want to create a web application, I'll need to use a tab UI, right? And within my tab UI. I can add components within it. So let's see our tab UI that shifts with this demo. So um, tab UI allows you to um, arrange components to be linked within it. So once you create a tab UI, you can embed components that are within your project into the tab UI this way. You can also create branches for your tab UI. So let's see what this preview for this tab UI is going to look like. Right, so um, I'm going to show you that other component um, that we launched just now. So remember we did the security alongside with this. So um, we we can learn, we can log in into this as well, right? To show um, the different aspects of the um, tab UI. So um, with this, right, you can see how to use the tab UI and the way you can nest components within the tab UI. Um, so I really encourage you to launch the demo app, connect it to NotWind database that ships with it, and then um, check out the various components that are within your uh, project and see how to use them. Okay, so let me show you the one for mobile app as well for this how to launch it. Let's close this. So to close the project, um, let's just close from here and then you go back to your workspace, click on workspace, come back to sample tutorial, then click on demo mobile application. Then we just do okay. So our not win database is already launched. So we don't need to reconnect it again, just um, connect. Okay, so for your um, mobile app demo, right, you also have um, various um, projects that ships with it, with which you can learn the different um, panels and controls within um, alpha software. So um, let me just, let's start with the default one. So with the default one, right, um, let's pick up on any of the UX and see a preview of it. So we are going to pick on main UX. There's no need to create backups to be seen, no. Um, say yes or that, just to refresh the database. Okay, so um, remember your UX. Um, I said your UX is majorly for mobile um, applications, right? And um, your for mobile applications, you definitely need to know how to um, use panels. So your panels are like your mobile frame for every of your mobile page, right? And then you can navigate from one panel to another using the um, panel navigator. So if you notice, panels are embedded within navigators. And then the navigator, when you see LTR, that's left to right. When you see BTC, that's bottom to top, right? So that's the acronym for those. So um, 
you can create your panels from the menu panel here, right? Add new panel, panel layouts, panel card. So your panel card is a container for your component in your um, web development and then your navigator to move around panels, right? Um, if you use the panel layout, the panel layout is going to create both navigator and card for you at the same time. So that's the difference. But this is already created from the demo. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so now let's check the database that it's connecting to. Um, we'll just need to test the database from here. Yeah, so we are connecting to, let's use this. So this is why it's complaining. The tables are not bound, so we need to bound it. Um, but this is automatic. Um, let me check the not in database control for it.
Okay, so this is fixed. So this is what is going on in case you also experience the same error. Um, okay, let me let me change. Let me go back to what I had before so that, so whenever you create this, um, whenever you create this demo, demo connection string, right? When you create this demo connection string, it gives it a default connection name of AA demo not wind, right? But if you look at your, um, How's it called? Your component. Okay, let let's delete the. Let's delete this. So it shifts this way, and creates your connection string with this name, right? But when you go to your component, let's just pick on any component. When you go to your component and you try to preview. It comes with an error that, yeah. Let me use a different component. Let's use this one. Okay, so now if you look at the error, it says could not connect to database internal error can't find named connection not wind. so it's looking for the connection called not wind right in your for your connection but if you if you want to resolve this all you just need to do is to um go and check your connections click on your sql click on your your all your connections you find them here under alpha deal connection string so if you can't find that connection name here, then it will come up with that error. So what I did was just to simply change this connection name to the connection name um, that it's asking for. But of course the tables and all that that is using is within the database. So I'm just going to change this, click on edit. Um, don't change anything in the connection string, just leave it as it is. Um, if you want to test if your connection string is working, you can click on test connection. Once it gives you success, you are fine. In case you are connecting to any other database like um, access files or um, SQL or MySQL, always test your connection from here, even after building it. So for you to build it, you just click on build, Put in your connection details. Um, first of all, pick your connection type. 
if it's um, SQL. So these are all the different connection types that Alpha Software connects to. Um, for people who are very good with any of this, then you can use it. Someone once asked me if it connects to MongoDB. Yes, it does. So this is MongoDB here. Um, oh, interesting, this is Excel too. Okay, I have not tried Excel before, but I can see Excel here. So you can also try it with Excel. Um, if you click on Excel, I'm sure you just need to put in the file name. Oh, okay. Yeah, so with Excel, also this is beautiful. You can, you can use your alpha software and Excel. Right, so these are the various options for your tables and um, um, for your data collection, right? But for this one, we can use the alpha um, soft, the database that shifts with alpha software. So we just need to change this to not win, right? The connection name and then it will work well. Um, if we want to see the various database um, tables in this not with, you can click on explore DB, then click on database, click on the tables. Um, these are all the tables that ships with it, you can see. Um, then we say, okay. Um, before I leave this page, let me also quickly mention something. Alpha software is really very interesting and robust. It's just that it has many, many options which you need to learn by practice, right? So um, even this not win database, you can export it out into a different database that you want to work with. So from here, I can click on export and then I take the connection. No, oh, um, sorry. Okay. Okay, no. So we can click on export and it will give us the um, connection string and the um, file path to the connection string. And then what we need to do is to copy the file um, for the database itself. So that file contains all the tables that I've shown you um, just um, under edit, yeah, under the explore database, yeah. right? So once we have changed the connection name, we can then close and refresh here. Let me see if I can refresh from here. Okay, so let's come back to design, then click on preview again to refresh. Right, so you can see that is displaying correctly for us now. So, um, so for our demo app, we can also create something similar to this. Um, on a mobile app, you can have something like this, right? So this is one of such that you can create. You can also, you can close this um, and look at different other options on um, what you can create on the demo mobile app. So always use the working preview to view your app. So whenever you see errors, all you need to do is to check for the reason for the error. So here it says your database has returned blah, blah, blah. No such column image comes new. Mm. Okay. So you need to take the data binding for that. And uh, let's go to the properties for it, or the controls for it. Find the control. Okay, so let's automatically map the fields.
I'm coming to. Yeah, so let's see. There's okay, it's not binding to a table. French people in schema. Field information for image, 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 image. Oh, okay, I see. What is complaining for? Can't find the image. Yes, this Don't work, then we'll go to the component. Oh, okay. So I'm having an error here. Um, I don't want to spend time trying to fix this one error. Um, I'm going to create mine and then we'll see how it works together because of time so um but we have seen one of the components this is another component but i think the issue for this particular component maybe it's coming from one of the embedded components in it and there are many components that are embedded in it. so let's um, leave this and 
um, go to another um, component. I'll just show you one more component in this and then we we'll create a simple customized mobile app together um, before I finish this revision class. So um, I'm going to close this component now. I have not even no. But um, majorly, you can see all these components and all the, the items in it are arranged. Then um, also check out web pages. Um, now, each of these web pages would have, let me use the, um, so this web page would have the tab UI components in it, right? So. So um, the all of the tab UI, right? You just have it in this web page. So the web page is like your panel for web application because um, you know your web application is displayed on um, web pages, right? So it can be. Um, so we use AW5 web page so as to embed alpha five components. But if you want to create static web pages, you can use HTML web pages, um, create it, and um, put in your own um, HTML into the source. Um, so you see, it gives you a very blank um, page. So all your HTML um, tags will come in here, right? And okay, let me let me just look for a simple. Um, website, copy the HTML page from it and see. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Right, so this is what basic structure of an HTML looks like. Your body, the side to the end, the body. So um, this, I'm looking for something that is much more higher. Uh, yeah. So if you have written your HTML code or you have an HTML web page, you can just um, copy the Make sure you copy everything um, within your HTML opening and closing tag. So if I copy this now and put it into my HTML page for Alpha 5, you, oops, sorry. This is your closing tag for your HTML. Make sure your tags are correct and make sure to use Alpha software opening HTML tag. So I'm going to use this one the way it is. You can see there's a difference. This small letter, this capital letter. So take out this one, right? And once you go to view, you see your HTML page. So in case you want to create static website, right? You can use your HTML page for that. And in Alpha software, you can. Yes, please. You can combine your alpha five pages, your HTML pages, everything um, within your web application. So you can build something really robust with alpha software. All right. So um, that said, um, I want us to create a quick customized mobile app together. So let's close this now. Now let's create a new workspace. I can have multiple projects in my workspace, but I just want to create this in a new workspace. Um, right, so let me 
create a new empty workspace. I'm going to give it a name. Sorry. Oh, oh. Then, um, what can we give it? Then I can um, change the location or leave it as the default location. Um, then, okay. Okay, so it comes to the default project, right? I'm going to use my default project. Okay, so now to create. Um, Okay, before I create um, my, my um, application, I want you to connect to data, external data source, um, SQL external data source. So I'm going to come to my SQL and I'm going to create a database for it. So for those of you that have installed SQL, you can use your SQL or you use it. Okay, no, let's use Excel since it, it can connect to Excel. Let's create an Excel for, let's um, demo that. So um, in your Excel file, right, um, you have your rows and columns, your columns. So let's, I want to create the simple mobile app for um, a taxi company, a taxi, a company that, or something like um, Uber now, right? So I want my um, clients, customers to be able to see the list of the different cars that they have, the different services that they offer, and then be able to, um, make a booking. So something as simple as that, just three pages. View services, view um, um, vehicles, and then make a booking. So let's assume that, let's say um, I have a serial number. So I have the list of the vehicles. So I want to create that like a table here. I can call this serial number, but most times you use what we call ID. So column ID and then vehicles, list of my vehicles, right? So uh, let's say I have the poster buses. I have the deep cars. I have the salon cars. Um, one, two, three, four. Then I have the small buses. Small bus, right? And I have pictures for all these four. Um, type of buses. I can always go online and Google for those pictures, but then let's just, um, I think I kept some pictures for buses I can use for this demo, but I wanted us to do it together. So I'm going to name this sheet. I think it should work this way. I've not used it with Excel before, but I've used it with SQL, so let's try it with Excel. So I'm going to name these vehicles. So these are my list of vehicles. So this particular file, I'm going to save it um, in my, I'll save it in a location where I can easily get it because, okay, let me just create a new folder.
right. So I created the folder and then um, let's call this logistics. Logistics, right. So this is my Excel file with my data, right? Um, let me now use this to connect to Alpha software, right? So I'm back to my Alpha software. I want to create a component that will connect to my Excel software and pop up the vehicle. So I'll come to new component, web component, then grid. I want to use um, a grid component for this. And then I'm going to show you how you can use the grid component both for web and mobile. So let's use just one component. Um, and the grid will serve that purpose as well. So let's say new. So we are going to use the blank grid component. Um, if you want to use any of these templates, you have to click on this. Um, these templates come with your, um, your component already arranged, but I want to use a blank one. So you, you can try this out later, but let's use a blank one for this. Right. So. Now, on once I once my grid component is created, what I will need to do is to then connect it to the data source. Um, so, this is your this is your component. Um, okay, let's look at the layout. This is what this layout will look like. If you change it to this type, it will look like this. We are going to come back to this, but let's connect it to the data source first. Um, so, under my data source. Right, I have this option let's come here. So here, I'm going to create a connection screen. So whenever you want to connect to a database or a data source, you must have what we call a connection screen. It's just a string that will tell the application. Software engineers are very familiar with that name. Um, it's just a string that will tell the application where to find the data. So that's all connection. So um, we're going to add a connection string. We're not going to use this um, demo database for now. We are going to create our own database. So um, new. Um, so I'm going to call this Excel connection because I want to connect Excel. You can call it any name. Then you go to build. And these are the options. So let's click on Excel. Just like I said, I'm trying it for the first time, but I'm sure it's going to work. So, okay. So now I'm in the Excel type. Um, I'm going to simply come here to choose my Excel file, right? I created it under my C folder. Um, I think I created it. Alpha software class, yes. So this is my Excel file. So once I click on it, right, I can test connection. Okay, so you see the connection will not work yet. Why? Because, oops, okay, let me see. Maybe it's a, let's pick. For newer versions, let's pick 2003. I think I have old Excel file there. Let's test connection. Yo. Well, if Excel file doesn't work, if connection to Excel does not work, then we need to use we need to use SQL. Excel doesn't use username or password, so, oops, let's see. Okay, so let's not waste time on this. Let's go to our SQL. Um, I'm going to 
we can check that later on how to connect Excel because since we have Excel listed there, then I'm sure that's going to be possible. So um, for our database, um, we can create a new database, um, right? And we can create tables for our new database. Let me call this um, alpha software projects. So you just say, okay, that's how to create database. Um, so I'm going to create my table in this database. Just a simple table to use. So right click on table, say new table. Um, you define, that's the same way we defined in Excel. You define the column name, um, integer for numbers, very backer for characters. Um, so let's just do this. Very close. Backer. Yeah, so this is fine. We don't want no, so you just save, call it very close. Yeah. So, So once you have saved, the table is created, you come back here and click refresh. You'll find your table here. So if you want to now put in data into your table, you right click and you say edit. So here I can say one, then um, big boss. So. Um, right. Okay, so um, once you have entered the data, you can close, close, and you can um, edit this to Okay, yeah, we can view this, right? So I said, we want to create three things, vehicles, um, services offered, then client booking. Um, I've created this table before, instead of wasting time, let me just copy and recreate the table. Table. Don't bother about this, but this um, is just going to speed up our demo for today. Yeah, so I'm going to recreate this into our Okay, so, so back to the database we created, we have created the other two tables that we need for our project. So I'm going to refresh this. Okay, so we have three tables, we have vehicles, we have the list of vehicles, right? Then we have the services offered by these vehicles. 
I mean, services offered by uh, this company. Um, I can say, Uh, airport drop off. General. Um, airport. Special um, protection service. Um, oh, you can see what I'm creating. So I'm just creating services and categories of the services. And um, give me three uh, protection special. Okay, so these are the services that that company offers. Then whenever there's a booking, it goes to um, this booking. So for now, we don't have anything in booking, um, but in the booking, what we want to see is, okay, the name of the client, the event date, the pickup address, the destination address, and the rest of it. Okay, so now that we've created those tables, we can go back to our alpha software now and connect. Okay, so we're doing a new connection. can leave it as connection one. So we'll come here and build. So now we are going to pick SQL, SQL server. Okay. Right, so, um, so we just need to specify the details of our SQL server. So you must know the server name of your SQL server. So this is where to get that. If you come to SQL server, if you look at your connection, um point you see what we call server name so you must copy everything that is there server name right copy it and paste it in your uh, connection server right then um you must come here and specify the credentials for your connection server so whatever you use to log into your SQL Server here. If it's Windows authentication, you can use Windows authentication there as well. If it's um, SQL Server authentication and you know the login username and password, then you can use that as well. Um, but for this one, let's just use Windows authentication. And then you must select your database here. Before you select database, just click on refresh here. Once you click on refresh, to pop up all the databases in your SQL server. So we are going to look for the database we created. This is it, Alpha Software Projects. Click on it. Now, before you leave this page, always ensure to test your connection. If you don't test your connection, then you might be having issues at this point and you'll be battling with some other kind of errors. So it's always good to test your connection. Here. Once you are able to have a success, then you're fine. Um, well, I have a success with warning. I just need to read or ignore the warning. So um, I think we're fine with whatever it is. So now we'll just say, okay and test connection from here, see you have success. So, so our connection is created. Always um, know your connection name or be sure of your connection name, especially when you have multiple connections. Now, 
you can see again that with alpha software, you can um, connect to multiple databases. So I can connect to SQL. I can have another connection again to my SQL. I can have another connection again to um, various databases options. Hello? Okay, so yeah. So for now, let's just connect to this. So I'm going to close this. My connection is to it. Now on my, I'm back to my component. I'm going to select my connection, right? Um, okay, connect. Once you connect, you can then click on the table. You can see the tables we created in our SQL. So I want vehicles. I want to show the list of vehicles, right? So um, then my vehicle table, I need to specify a primary key. Um, I always prefer to use this auto increment option, but if it's not auto increment, it's fine. For you to make your table auto increment on your database, on your database design for that table, you simply come, click on the row for the primary key. The primary key is something that you need to identify the rows of your table, um, click on it, then come to um, the properties for it, come to identity specification and simply um, toggle it to yes. So this simply means that you, whenever there is an addition to this table, you don't need to type in one, two, three, four, five, it just um, allows to um, create that for you automatically. So once I've done this, I can save and then um, we're fine. So that's how to make your, um, your column auto increment. I'm going to come to primary key, set my primary key, this is my primary key. And then I'll say my primary key is auto increment. Um, so this is okay. Right, so I'm going to come now to field. So this field is where you bind whatever is coming from your database to the display of your grid view. So I want the um, vehicles to display, right? Um, and I can add additional um, column to my data, to my grid view here. I want to add an image column. Um, so I'm going to just click insert, pick up the image, because I want to use this image to show the different um, pictures of the vehicles so that as the client is seeing the name of the vehicle, they are also seeing the picture. Um, so I have vehicles, I have images for my vehicle. Now, under my image um, option, I want to click on my, uh, I want to define my image. Um, so this part is very tricky, but I want you to listen to it very well. So under my uh, image column, I want to show images for different services. So let's say I have, I think I have just about four of them. So um, I'm going to put in four different pictures. Now, um, Alpha Software allows you to load image from its own web project or to even um, from its own folder right, within the application. So I'm going to add in different images there. So I'm going to specify the image that should be loaded for each row using a condition. Um, let's specify the image. So I can use built-in image from Alpha 5, but I don't want to use that. <laughs> I want to use image from my own web project. Um, so I'm going to add the image to my project, right? Um, I'm going to simply go to my, I think I have some images I downloaded. Okay. 
Sorry, let me go to my downloads. Okay, so these are the images. I have them in my download. Get back, get back. So why is it not showing this? Let me go again. Oh, okay, so this is reason. Select image from list of images in project. Oh, okay. Okay, let's add the images to our project. So let's close. Okay, before we close it, we're going to save the web component and we'll come back to it. Very cool list. Let's um, bring in those images into um, our alpha project. So we're going to create a new folder. Add new folder, so new folder. So you can call this images. So under images, we can add file. Change this to all files. So let me see, can I have the three at the same time? So let's add it to Nakitai. Okay, so these are my images that I want to display. Um, okay, so the images are directly in my images folder here. Um, let me go back to my web component. Here's the web component that I saved. Okay. So, um, recreating the web component again. Um, we see I have a connection, connect, select, vehicles, save. Come to fields, 
we need this, we need the um, boots. So I'm adding the two columns from my um, table, vehicles and ID. Um, so I'm going to add an image um, column as well. So under image, um, let's define the images to load using conditions. Then let's select the image. So now pick image from your web project um, file, right? You can see we can see those images now. And once you click on it, it's going to preview the image for you. So this for my coastal post, right? And um, so I'm going to show it on my grid. Um, okay, so I would say. Um, I want to, def I think my, let's see, my first, okay, big buses, that's the um, big coaster bus. So this would be my um, first option, first one, All right. So I'm going to add another condition for the second boss. Um, pick image from file. So let's use the Jeep. You know, saloon car. Right. Um, ID post two. So um where's the third one? Salon Costa Jeep. Right. Jeep ID equals to three. Okay, so I don't have the fourth image, so I'm just going to leave it at this three for now. Um so now if we with what we have now, we can preview. Let's preview and you can see what it looks like. So you can see um, with this, you can see a list of your um, bus type and image. Now, if I want um, the user to be able to impute details, I mean, see the details of this vehicle, I can... Uh, no, I didn't put the details. Okay, let me change to the um, data source that I have the details specified. All right, so let me edit this. My connection. Yeah, why is this hanging? Mm -mm. <laughs> no, this is not. Okay, yeah, so we are back. Let me create a different connection.
Okay. We'll use the same one. And just a quick one. I'm going to export the data here. So, Um, um, I want to create uh, more data into the vehicles um, table so that, um, but I don't want to have to type it because I have that data somewhere. So I just want to bring it from where it is into um, this table. But in your own case, when doing this demo, you can, you can um, type in all the data. I might have zero. Okay, so I should have my data copy now. Okay, so um, still using my vehicles table. I'm going to delete this one. Uh, edit. Right, so uh -huh, this is the data I need. Okay, so with this, let me call it the name. So we are going to um, 
also in our fields on alpha software. Refresh here. So this is my prom key and want to increment. Right, so here. I'm going to select it again and very uh, good name and add an image. Yeah. Then So make this two and the last one make it three. So, so, so this uh, vehicle ID, we don't want people seeing ID, so we can ID it. Um, just go to the properties here and click ID column. Then for the column image, and um, this is going to display it this way, right? Um, but we can also allow people to see more details. So let's come back to the components. If we want people to see more details, all you simply need to do without coding is to uh, make it objectable. Click OK. Yeah, so we we'll make this objective so that um, changes can, the detail part for the grid can be seen. Um, I mean, changes can be made or you can um, click here and say you want to see the detail part. Um, so this is what is going to look like. You need to specify the detail part. Come to fields, you need to choose um, the parts that should be seen for the details. Um, we can take out this part. Yeah, so this is what it's going to look like, right? 
then I can even customize this look um, just by clicking. I'll prefer to use this um, so that I can see um, at once, right? Okay, so I don't want to see all three. Um, to change that, we're just going to use the properties. That will be the detail view properties. And then uh, number of rows that should be displayed one. If you use minus one, it's going to use the default value, which is three. But we want it to display just one. So you come and view again. Of rows of data, one, yeah. Rows of data, yeah, one. Then um, I don't want this to display. I can take this out, right? I also do not want this to display. I don't want it to highlight. I can re remove this highlight option. So as you change the property, you can always come here and see what it looks like. Right. So um, whenever I click on the boss type here, it's going to show me the display. Let's change this component to home type. So let's see again, right? So as you click on this, it will change the details. So a client can pick the car and then see the details of the car. Um, I just want to embed this into a US component and then um, we'll stop the class for today. Um, so on the properties, you can make many changes. Um, I don't want to see the records per page. I just want it to display for me. I don't want to see this. So I'm going to check this out. As records, but so you uncheck this. Okay, sorry, I'm rushing. Okay, so I still showing this. Or oh, you can view the details from here. So um, we've created a component. We'll just save. Let me call this. Um, Let me replace it for that before. Yes, replace it. Okay, so we have our components done. Okay, so I'm going to create a US component now and embed my um, my list of my grid view into it. So I have a US component. So under my US, um, I'm just going to add a panel card. Panel card. So in my panel card, I'm going to right click and say um, embed component. Okay. 
Okay, so in my panel card, I'm going to come to embed components. Yeah, embed object, right. So I was looking for that. Um, so on the panel card, you go to add control, then um, you pick on embed. Um, is it again? Embedded object. So once you get to your embedded object, it will show you um, your existing components. So I'm just going to pick on this, say OK. Um, once I do OK, you see my object embedded in it. So um, all those demo projects that you see, um, grid view, tabbed UI components within the panel or within tab. Um, other components, this is how you do that. For you to nest components into another, you do it like this. So with this now, I can, I just want it to be a one panel card. Um, this panel card, I can um, create an header for it. Let's start. So you just get familiar with these properties. Um, you can create a next button on your header. Um, panel card, panel card. And add header. Yeah, panel header. Mm, just for you to see what it looks like. You can also right click to add footer. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now, but you can also create your, so um, your panel card has a header, it has a foot card, then it has a main object. Now let's see what it looks like. Always remember to check your mobile option. Right, so, we still need to do some formatting here. So this is your panel header, your footer. You can put in buttons there. Mm, the default that came with it, I can move it, yes. So I can use the header and footer to define buttons like yes, no, no, yes. I mean, next. So within my footer, I can put button controls, um, add control. I can say, put a button. Next button. Yeah, I can. Oh, 
Okay, so, yeah. So you can see the header and the footer. You can see what um, you can do with it, the buttons. Um, let me quickly edit this preview so that it looks nice. So let's save this. Um, call this um, UX one. Can close this. Okay, so no. Um, let's come to this property. What can I remove from? Okay, so we can edit the components, we can save, then we can look at the view again. Right, so it looks a bit better now. Right, so um, I want um, them to be able to view the buses and to see the details. The detail of the bus when you scroll down. Right. And um, I can also allow them to create a booking. Okay, I'm going to stop in 12 minutes time. Let's see. So let me let's just create a grid view now for the booking. So um, the client is able to view the vehicles and then for them to make a booking, they need to be able to fill in their details into the booking table. So for that, we're going to use a grid view as well, create a new web component. Um, but for this grid view, we are going to connect to the bookings um, table. So we we have to make this objectable, and then I'm going to come to my data source, connect my connection, pick my table. I want booking. Mm. Right, so I picked the table. I need to specify the primary key of the table. So my primary key is uh, client ID and is auto increment. Okay, so um, I'm going to come to fields. What are the information I want the client to supply to me? So this bot allows you to pick everything here to this place, but I don't want this logical record to this place. I'm going to remove those. Then vehicle ID, client ID, ID and uh, auto increment and foreign key. I'm going to put it down and I'm going to hide it. 
so that the client does not need to see it. To hide it, just um, go to the field properties here and hide column. Hide column. So client name, date. Now client's name, you can also define the way you want um, these controls to be displayed. So client's name, I want it to be a text box so that they just type in their name. So event date, I want to use a calendar control. Um, I want it to display um, calendar. It's going to then pick up address, text mobile, text time. Um, I can also check this display format. Okay. Uh, means of ID. I want this to be a drop down. So I'm going to come here and change this to drop down. Um, so something like where people can pick options instead of them typing in the options. So if you pick a drop down, you can specify the options for your drop down. Um, I can specify an initial value, select an item, option. Um, then my choices, I can specify it here in the list. Um, I can say what does card. So the user will see these options. I can I this other columns. I I so these are the ones that I want to see. So let's see. Okay, I don't want it to look like this. I want it to be a form like, so I'll come here and then change to form. I want it to display as a form because I'm using it to collect data. So um, form, click on preview. You can see it has changed it. I want just one form displayed instead of three. So go to properties, change um, rows of data. No, in, on, go to the update settings, number of new record rules, change this to one. Let's see again now. Right, so um, now we can use that to collect the information we need. We want the user to be able to cancel. Um, we can also do more customization here. Just like I said, Alpha software has a lot of properties and features. You just need to study them. Okay, so now that we have created the form, we can save this. Oh, I don't want this to display by the side. Update settings, right, let's check little options. Okay, let's see now.
No. Okay. Let's the rules of the time at one. Okay, so um, let's save this component. So we'll call this new booking. Save. And um, we'll now go to our UX component. Then we'll change this button. Let's assume we want to use this button for calling up the new form. So we'll just say uh, this button should load the um, panel. Okay, but before you do that, you need to add that panel card. So um, let's add a new panel card. New panel card. Make sure your um, highlight is on the last point so that your new panel card doesn't um, separate the rest of the panel. So we'll come here and panel card, insert after. Right, so this is your new panel card. So within your new panel card, um, embed that component, click on add control, go to embed components, you know, embed object and new booking. So this is like a new page in your mobile app. Now our panel card, we want it to be able to move from left to right or something. So we'll add a panel navigator. So we can say insert around. Um, so this is your panel navigator and see where it is ending, right? You must always check because if this arrangement has happened, then you have errors with previewing your mobile app. Okay. So. There's an error there. Should come down. Can always move my controls around this way. I said to build the container. Okay, this is what it means, yeah. Mm, fill panel card container. No, don't fill it. Then... Okay. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, but... You can continue from here in developing your own um, um, web or mobile application. So the first panel shows me the list of my buses, right? And the details, I can click on these buttons to go to the next panel to say next, or I can allow the user um, drag to the next and page so here they can put in their booking so let's let's just put in a booking and see okay so you see this displays the calendar control for you if you're a software engineer you need to write code for this this will take a long time but once you're familiar with the features of alpha 5 then you are fine 
let's just do uh, so we are just putting in data and then would Okay, so this is the drop down I created, right? Then you can submit. So once you submit, yeah. All right, it's submitted. Okay, so let's see. Okay, great. So um, this is the data we just inserted. You can see um, the value in our database, right? So when the client makes a booking, you can see it's coming to your database. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for now. Um, so I've, I've showed you how to use the Alpha 5 demo um, web and mobile that ships with Alpha 5, and then how to create your own customized um, web. Okay, now I didn't show you the web, I only showed you the mobile, but the same way we created the web, I mean the mobile, right? Save. So what we've done is that we've created the grid components and we've embedded it in the UX components for mobile. If I want to create this same grid components into a web application, all I need to do is just to add a UX, I mean, a tabbed UI component, this one. So this tabbed UI component is what you use for um, your web application. Right, so you embed the controls here, and then the containers as well. Um, but because of time, I'm not going to show this now. You can um, use the tab UI control in the demo web app to um, embed your um, grid components and then test. So that that for today's revision class. It's a long revision, um, but I just wanted to show you how you can create something different from just creating the same app that they've created in the videos. So you should try to create your own app as well from scratch. And um, um, yeah, so that's that. Thank you all very much. You, I'm sorry for taking your time, but alpha software or learning how to do anything application is like that. You need to put in time to learn and to create those apps, right? Um, this simple app that we've created, if you if you take out the same time a software developer will spend to create this, it'll be far longer. So, but once you get a good grasp of this, you can imagine you'll be able to create a full-fledged application within a day. So imagine you are getting paid for a project that you completed within a day and you are getting a um, big box of money for that. So yeah, we are going to stop here. I'm going to stop sharing. I, um, for some people who didn't follow through completely, you can watch the video later. And um, if you try all the steps that are demonstrated in today's revision, then you will be very, very good with using alpha software. Um, you just need to be creative around um, putting in graphics. Um, graphics do not come embedded with alpha software. So 
you might need maybe an HTML or a UX designer to create those HTML div pages for you and you just embed them into your alpha software. But functionalities for alpha software is super, it's great. And I really encourage you to put in effort to learning alpha software. So this would be the end of my training for you on alpha software. I look forward to hearing from all of you on interesting things that you're able to create with alpha software. And it would be great you communicate that with me as well. Um, there are many things I look forward to doing with the team on alpha software. So yeah, so that's that from here. I will send the slide to you, um, maybe on the WhatsApp platform. Yeah. Okay, thank you, everyone. Hello. Are we all sleeping? Are we there? Hello. Hello. Hello, can you? Are you sure you can hear me? Oh, yes, you won't let me. <laughs> oh, can I hear you? Can hear you. Okay, so I'm sure we the class. Okay. Let me see. Uh, let me see your your reaction. Alpha software. Be sincere. You can just throw in those reactions to or comments to the chat box area, or you can feel free to open your mic and speak. Um, let's do that in the, in the next three minutes. I'm not seeing any reaction and I'm not seeing any comments. What's your view on Alpha Software? Okay, I think I got this speaker from Success. And Daniel, huge. Okay, what do you mean by huge? Yeah, it has a lot of properties and features that you need to get familiar with because um, it, it's bag and drop, basically. You are not writing code. So um, they try to put in anything the programmer can do. They try to put that in as a feature. So it's just for you to discover all those features. And the more you practice, the more you create the ideas with it, the better you get to know those features. Any other comments, any questions? Okay, so um, we said this thing. I'm going to hand over to you at this point. Let's hope that um, the others that were not able to join or those who lost track in the class can watch the video and learn more. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Edison, are you there? Sorry. Sorry, I am actually having a, a meeting that um, that I scheduled earlier. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, it's fine. I just um, told the person to give me a few minutes now. Okay, so I said I'm done with the class. Um, it's a long revision, but I just wanted to touch on different points 
on alpha software. Um, I hope people who lost track can watch this video later on and get more info or for people who were not able to attend as well. But um, I think with this, I've covered everything that there is to alpha software it's just for them to um, be able to do more practice and discover yeah. features themselves as well. Oh, oh that, that's great. Um, I'll, I'll be I'll be uploading this um, other video on the group later on, so they will be able to catch up. Okay, um, great. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. So our next meeting is, is going to be um, Thursday, right? Yeah, on Thursday. Okay. Um, I, I saw some people suggesting that. Um, uh, or rather applauding the fact that you were you made it five o'clock last week. <laughs> but um I I think I don't know if it's something you still want to continue or it's just a one-off thing. Oh no, it's just a one-off thing. Um so or should we continue it five o'clock? If people are applauding five o'clock, then five o'clock is fine. I, I think it's basically those who, who work. So, um, but then I don't know. They're on the call. The ones on the call can 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 decide that if um yes, let's consider that. If I was No, I said let's continue by five. That's I think that's fine. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, no ma'am. problem. We can just um share that in the chat to say um Thursday class will be five o'clock. But going forward, the um, the other classes is just Thursday. There's no Saturday. Either. I purposely did extra classes for Alpha software because of how um, robust it is, and just to encourage them to be able to.